little bit perspective from a funder. And good news first. As a funder, we, when a grant is approved, we ask grantees to report publication to us. Uh, and therefore, we collect uh, publications in our system. Uh, in the last, let's say, eight years, we collect about this number of publications. And the good news is really that after correcting and filling out missing UIs, we have a percentage of 85% uh, publications having UI. This includes all type of publication. It also might include some duplicates where a publication is assigned to two grants. But actually, this is, I think this is really good news. Not all credit goes to Crossref, I have to say, because when you look at the agencies behind these DOIs, it's 99% Crossref. And then you have this kind of troublesome, troublesome in the, in the hand in, in to say, let's, it's very hard to deal with those um, DOIs from other agencies because we have a REST API, or we have integrated REST API, and when people enter the DOI from another agency, it, does not happen anything because there are, we, we, we just use Crossref. And I'm really glad that at least uh, the confusion between Crossref and data side has been, um, let's say, not totally resolved, but there's now this message out that Crossref and data side recommends to assign DOIs from Crossref for primary um, research outputs like journal articles. Um, regarding the business model, um, at the SNF we finance pure gold OA. Um, you see here a chart from the OpenACPC project, which is also based on Crossref data. And we assume that the costs uh, for uh, Crossref assigning DOIs is included in the APC, so we pay indirectly for that. We do that as well as for books and book chapters, where we also fund gold open access. And here we also have gone uh, even further. So anyone who wants money for gold open access books has to assign DOIs. This means the problem here was we had to deal with often small publishers, which haven't even published electronically. And for us, it was when we fund something, we want the greatest visibility as possible, and therefore we acknowledge that DOIs is clearly the way to go. So one, I think these guidelines has also resulted to some new gains in smaller publishers uh, becoming member at Crossref. Then another part which I really like it is this kind of, of funding or funder search. I think this is never something he has asked for. It somehow was there. We could go there and could enter our name, and we found out, okay, we are in there, and we have identifier there who has done that. And it's really great. And last year, I did an analysis. So I downloaded all publications which with funding organizations, um, my funding organization was in there. And you clearly can see it's, it's more and more content in there. And what I can say, because I, we think we have about roughly 10,000 publications a year, I would say there is about 60% uh, of the publications having funding information in the metadata from Crossref. Maybe just a comparison, when we look at this number in dimensions, um, we get to about 90%. So I would say there is about 30% um, of publication having funny acknowledgement which is not yet in the metadata from uh, Crossref. And I would like to see that to switch, not, not that a proprietary uh, company has to do text mining to find that out. I would like to see that, to see that in, in Crossref. Also, going more into the detail, looking at these uh, numbers, I mean, what, what I did is, is looked at the numbers and I can say for 27% 72%, sorry, there is specific award information which we can use and map to the grant we have in our list. And then there are 23% where there is just, like it's funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation, but there is no award information. I mean, the author probably has uh, not 
acknowledge a specific grant. And then there are these ugly 6% where there is a number, like funded by Swiss National Science Foundation and the number, but I have no idea what grant these references to in my database. Um, and I think therefore it's, it's also uh, confirming this initiative going on and, and, and uh, Crossref, this grant identifier, grant identifier Crossref. Uh, I've been there in the technical uh, advisory group um, for, for, or for, for, for this initiative. And I, I think also we at SNF are really open for participation in this initiative, uh, also for financially contributing to, to Crossref so that we can push all the grant data to Crossref, which then would enable publishers and repositories, think about research data repositories and other, other users, to uh, create libel links between grant and research output. Uh, here at the right side, I, I, I published a, a really nice application currently on Figshare, which is based on, on uh, grant data from Dimensions. And I would like to see that uh, something based on or, or based on Crossref data at the end when funders have contributed the data to Crossref. So it's really everyone can use that uh, publisher repositories uh, and attribute um, grants from a specific list. And my last say is uh, I think funders becoming um, more and more aware what Crossref is doing. I think Mostly it's known, okay, there are GOIs out there. Most people don't know, really know what is really, or how rich the metadata of Crossref already is. Um, what I also see is that the Crossref is so often the, the source for so many applications. I mean, there are so many projects out there and you see, okay, the, the base data is from, from Crossref and also for text data mining, I think Crossref has good solutions. And therefore, I am really in favor of, let's try for quality at, at the source. Uh, what I also see that there's a lot of applications coming downstream, using data from Crossref, doing stuff which I think should be done at the first place at Crossref, like adding funding information, like in dimensions, when they do text mining and get uh, information. I would like to see that happening in in, um, in uh, the, the data from, from Crossref, as well as, uh, let's say, adding ORCIDs for offer where this is not, where it's not in Crossref yet. This often happens in other um, repositories, for example, and therefore we lose a lot of information there. And also regarding the business model, I think as funder we are interested, I mean, we fund, so this is the idea that we pay money and we would like to maximize the profit for all. So um, I would like to see Crossref really continue or, or even become more open and also find um, sources to cover the costs. Maybe not the profit, but cover the costs. And I think funders are, are open to do that, especially now with this grant, identi uh, grant identifier initiative. Yes. Thank you.